Let's go, y'all. Cat food, everything around me. Let's go, y'all. Ready? You know, people who are always in front of camera are always ready. Live, live, live. Bring it on. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Arch Conversation Season 10, 10, 10. Today we have with us an amazing individual, very pretty, very tall, very slender, who is, happens to just model the new art shirt. <laughs> um, she became a fit model unexpectedly. And she's here with us because, once again, this season is about beyond the ordinary in terms of career path. And Vivian here, do you want to give a brief introduction to yourself? Sure. My name is Vivian. I am a Singaporean model who happened to be very lucky and had most of my career in the US, in New York. Yay! Yay. Yeah, okay, so Vivian, do you want to introduce who you are and how did you go down, get into this career path? Sure. So I started with like a local modeling contest and then when I won the contest, I joined because a friend of mine got scouted and but her family is Muslim. So they're very conservative and she was like, oh, my mom doesn't really want me to join, but if you join it, then I'll join also. And I was like... How old were you then? I was like 19. Mm. 19 at the point of time, I was still in poly and she was my poly classmate. Actually, uh, funny enough, she's now a full-time model in London, based oh, in London. Oh, wow. Yeah. I joined the contest and I won it and one of the judges was Sheila Sim, like a local celebrity. Yes. And then um, at the contest, she scouted me and she asked me to if I wanted to join her agency. And at a point of time, I was very set on like, I want to be a journalist. Very serious one. Okay, this is my life career. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I just try that. My mom was like, you know what? You can always be a journalist. You can always go to school when you're like 40 or 50. But try and model when you're 40 or 50. Lah. See anybody from the Excuse day. me, this is day and age. Yeah, but this We're, is like, you know. Back yeah, in back the day, in the day. Yeah, yeah. My mom yeah. was like, you just, just try it because there's an opportunity that's given to you. Why yeah, not, right? Yeah, yeah. So then I started. You were like, blessed, honey. I know. Blessed. Thanks, mom and dad, for having unprotected. <laughs> but, um, so then my first like modeling trip was to Shanghai. And then while I was there, I got offered a contract in Hong Kong. So I wow. went to Hong Kong. Then I came back to Singapore, tried to model for a bit, but it was actually kind of slow for me here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I got offered a contract in Milan. So I went to Milan. But before I got there, I was like, since I'm already there, might as well spend a couple of days in Paris to see agencies, right? So we went to see 20 agencies and I was offered That's a, lot. a contract by 18 of them. Wow. And it was like, like, honestly, it blew my mind because, like I said, I was not working much here. So I was mm. like, oh, I must be such a bad model. Like, you know, maybe yeah. I'm not cut out for this. Oh, wow. no. And then when I went there and I was offered all these contracts, and I was like, maybe I'm not so bad after all. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, when I was in Paris, I got scouted to go to the New York agency. With the same, it's the same like agency basically, it's Next. Yeah. So like IMG, Next and Elite, they have like worldwide networks yep. where they have all the agencies. So I was signed by Next and got scouted to go to New York and then I just stayed there for like six and a half years. And when did you move back? I moved back to Singapore end of 2019 actually. I wanted to go... Was it COVID or was it just happened that you came back right before? I came back right before COVID. Oh, it was nice. just like chance and then when I was done... That's a good time to come yeah. back, right? Like. Yeah. And then if the world went silent and yeah. slow and it was very nice to you can take time for yourself. Yeah, and stuck with family. Yeah, I was exactly. The only person there. Yeah, correct. So, so if like you had nice. stayed there, it would have been you would have found some way to come back as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically kind of my um, career timeline. Yeah. yeah. And to this day you're still modeling, yes? Yes. But have you gone into anything else? Yeah, so I... Present, actually, presenting, hosting, things like that? Or? I've tried hosting before, like for... I was actually... Because like I said, I wanted to be a journalist, right? So I have actually written stuff before, like articles for like L, and I was actually an intern at SPH before I started all the modeling stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I had some connections that I actually wrote like fashion... TV fashion scripts from Channel U. That's yeah. nice. So I did that. So you managed to still pursue your writing? kind of here and there it's not like a full-time thing it's more just yeah. like ad hoc and when i get the opportunity yeah. i'm like okay just do why, it, not? why not yeah right yeah so i've done that and then the last few years of being in singapore i also explored like set designing mm -hmm. set designing art direction but those i feel like i don't do as much anymore i collaborated a lot with this photographer called len len chai she's she shot the uh, w magazine cover of jennifer which recently mm -hmm. but she's based now back in la so after you find the crew of people that you can work very well with, like, you know, it's just like, oh, I want A, 
and you don't have to explain too much and you just all kind of get it. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. you experience that and then you have to work with other people that it's very, very, like, trying, then I think it killed my Basically, creatively, I feel like there's a sort of chemistry. It's like people don't understand this, I guess, as much. But, like, creatively, like, when you get that chemistry, you just need to say very few words. Yeah. And the vision is, like, it's, it's just very so in sync, nice. right? Yeah, it's correct. So nice. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Is that why you stopped? Um, trying like set design and all this other stuff. Yeah, I, I stopped also partially because I feel like a lot of the aesthetics that like Len and I really like and are into and are in sync with, it's not something that's very popular here in Singapore. And also budget is another thing that is Correct. a very big thing in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And like freedom as well. And Correct. To like something that looks different or feels different. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm like mostly just focusing on modeling is... Okay, so what are some of the obstacles that you faced? As for what you said earlier, what are some of the obstacles? Or have you heard anything negative about yourself? So I feel like this is something that I truly want to talk about because let's expound on what you said earlier in terms of we don't need to name names or go too far, but some obstacles you face, maybe like you said, with weight, your height, or you're not skinny enough, you're too fat, whatever it is. What are some of the things that you faced in your... How, how many years has it been? you just said, like 13 years. I've been oh, really wow. In my 13th year now. Yeah. But literally everything you just said. Yeah. Too tall, too short, too skinny, too yeah. fat. Everything, man. Then I, like, when I Does it take a toll on your anxiety or mental health, things like that? I would say in the first four years of my career, 100%. Because when you're still... And you're so young. So young. Yeah, right? you're, you're a little baby. Yourself out. You're not even sure who you are as a person yeah. yet. And then to have people like from the industry, sometimes like people who are, you know, like um, senior. And and you believe them. Yeah. So that was like a very big problem. When I first started, it was like, oh, you don't really fit. And even till today, it's kind of the same. Like I don't really fit in like the Asian aesthetics of like what beauty is. Yeah, I get what you mean. beauty. Yeah. And so I get people saying stuff to me like, hey, Vivian, you're too tan. You cannot do this kind of job. Or you're too sporty. You cannot do this kind of job. Yeah. Literally, I heard like, a brand owner tell the stylist who in turn told me she was like oh she stopped booking you because she said you don't look good in the frilly dresses yeah and at that point of time like this is just very recently too but in my mind like now after so many years right like i feel like i'm confident enough where instead of being like oh shit like if only i could pull off the frilly dresses i can now recognize that no it's not that i cannot pull it off it's just it's not the aesthetic that she wants correct exactly it's just different from it's not people. personal yeah right yeah but it took a lot of years to get there because like you said also when you're so young like what people say to you especially your appearance as a young woman we are very easily affected by what people think of us because we're correct. still trying to find ourselves so it's almost like you're doing market research to see like like what people say the most about you and yeah. then you tend to hold more value in those things. Correct. Right? It's the same, I think, with social media and the obsession with likes, following, mm-hmm. and things like that. Because I think over the years, I mean, social media has been, what, 5th, 12th? I mean, a lot, more than a decade now, right? Yeah. And people have been so obsessed to the point where if they, like, and this is not even, like, famous or anything, like, regular people that I know, oh, if I don't get 40 likes on this post, I'm going to delete it. Yeah. You know, or like, oh, I've dropped in five followers. What What did I do wrong? Yeah. Like, they start questioning themselves and stuff like that. So I feel like if someone basically, what do you think it is though? Is it a herd mentality in terms of the model arena and the people, all the models feel that way? Or is it like an external factor where like, you know, like the bookers and the producers and the brand owners and the stylists make you guys feel that way? Where does the pressure really come from, you think? I think the pressure, to be honest, the most pressure I felt was in Singapore. Mm. And I think it's because the country is very small. So the industry is very small. So everybody feels like we all individually have our own egos and prides, right? So if somebody doesn't like something or didn't turn out the way that they wanted it to, then they'll just be like, oh, it's because of you. Because to be honest, on set, the easiest person to take the fall is the model. Right. Because we... You're just a talent. Yeah, we're very That's all you are. Like, yeah, correct, yeah, correct. They're always working the same people. Oh, it's not their fault ever. It's always, oh, this is the only thing that changed. So maybe this is the person that is like fucking everything up, basically. Yeah, correct. So I feel like it's a lot of different things. But in Singapore, mostly it's, it's because it's very small. People are territorial. And because of that, they don't want to lose the jobs that they already have. So they want to make sure everything is perfect all the time. And also for that reason, they don't take risks. And if they do, and it doesn't turn out good, then they always have a fall guy. Correct, you know? correct. 100%. Yeah, I agree so with that. I, I think because the country is so small as well, 
people tend to get a bit competitive, even between models. I don't think it's the, I don't know if that's the case now, but I feel like when I started, it was very much like, oh shit, if I go to a casting and I see like two other Asian girls, I'm like, ah oh, shit, like they are my competitors, even though we look completely different. Yeah. So I feel like it's just because it's a, it's, it's a very small place. So everyone's like, oh, I, like there's a very small pie. I don't want to lose like any part of that pie. And now that you're way older, how do you feel about that? Um, now I just feel like, like, you, you know, like you were saying, like if people ever say like you're too tall, too short, you can never please anyone. There is always something to say. Yeah. But as other people are like, oh, you're too, like, I've always been very athletic. So it's like, oh, you're too like, like bulky or like too strong, too muscular. So I actually like did some insane diets where I lost so much weight that I wasn't even getting like my menstrual cycle anymore. Oh my god! And at that point of time, I was like, okay, finally, I feel like I'm skinny now. Yeah. And then my agency said, you know, you're too skinny. Can you like, don't lose any more weight? Like, just can you pull on a bit more weight? And then I'm like, so I see. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I just, yeah, that was a very hard cycle that I think most models will have to go through the first few years of their career. They just like, listening to what everybody say, internalizing it, and then thinking that is the absolute truth and that's what they need to do. But So how do you think that people can, or, or you know, aspiring models can step out of that? I, to be honest, I feel like now, the industry is a lot different. Mm. Also because of social media and also because a lot of brands are trying to be a bit more cognizant about what they are saying and the message they are putting out. Yeah. That, and the Gen Z models that I've met, they are all very confident. Or at oh, least yeah. that's how they come across because yeah. they have seen everything and all the conversations that are going on that I feel like they're not stuck in this like hole that I personally was stuck in when I started modeling before mm-hmm. all the conversations happened. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that's for the better. Yeah. I guess it will be. But also, I mean, I really don't know. I'm, obviously, I'm not a model, but um, yeah, it, it's are. just, it's, it's interesting to hear. And so out of, oh, sorry. My questions. I need them. <laughs> um, so, have you heard any like negative thing being said about yourself? Outside, like outside of all those kind of things, like not so much about looks and all that, about being model, but more like um, you choosing this career path. Obviously, earlier on, you said your mum was, was, is very supportive. Yeah. But has anyone not been supportive? Like, why are you doing this? You know, like, you don't even know if you'll succeed. Why are you taking this risk? Like, because at 19, to jump on this ship and just go somewhere else. And, I mean, you didn't take a ship, lah, but, you know, to, yeah. to do something. Multiple planes, though, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, these multiple flying things to go somewhere else and just pursue and keep looking for agencies and stuff like that. Yeah. It must not have been easy as well. But were there any deterrents or has anyone made you feel lousy about pursuing this path? I feel like maybe I've been very blessed. Nobody has really questioned because I also feel like my career kind of, the first few years, it kind of took off quite quickly. Like mm. with all the multiple placements and then basically so quickly getting signed to like Next Worldwide. So I think... Nobody really questioned like, oh, are you going to be successful or not? It was more just like waiting to see like, oh, like how far she's going to go. Mm-hmm. So um, what was your high point in your career? I think my high point was probably like first season in Paris. Like I said, like that point, I really felt like, oh, I'm just like such a shitty model. Nobody wants to work with me. And then getting so many offers, getting signed. And then my first season for Fashion Week, I actually did shows for like Anthony Vaccarello for his like first very oh, wow. first collection. Yeah. I was walking with like Carly Claus, all these top models. Yeah, yeah. And then I also did Vivian Westwood that same season. Yeah. And like just so That is many, insane, yeah, huh? For your so very first experience. You know? Yeah. And I'm like coming from the fact that I really genuinely thought I was like nothing, like not good at all. Yeah. So getting booked for all these like crazy things, working with these top models. Like I walked the show with Vivian as well, who's my idol. I was very simp for her. Yeah. I was like a bit awkward when she was talking to me. That I was like, uh, uh, okay, well, she's so so all. And then I just walked away mid conversation. Yeah. But like, that was the high point for me. And then also, there was like this instance where my agent just like texted me and said, Vivian, what are you doing now? Can you like head to the Baccarat Hotel like right now uh, for a shoot? And I was like, cool. I showed up. It was an L Italy shoot. Three days, like multiple hours, like 10 to 16 hours. Wow, that's insane. And it was like collection spread. So they were shooting everything, right? And 
when the issue came out, I told my friend who was in uh, Milan, it was for L Italy. So my friend was in Milan at the time. I was like, hey, can you pick up a couple copies of L Italy? Like, I'm in, I'm, I'm in this issue. And then she took a picture of it. She was like, you're not in this issue. You're on the issue. Oh, no. I they didn't. You didn't know? I didn't know at oh, all. Oh, gosh. And nobody told me. And that was when I was like, oh, my God. Maybe I'm not so bad after all. Yeah. Like, how, it's so hard to be on the cover. Of yeah, the, of course. Even a local magazine, it's not easy. You know, yeah. I'm like getting... L Italy cover my first season. Yeah. So that was the high point. Yeah. And I feel like I always bring up these examples because people will be like, but you have to constantly hit high points, right? And I don't think that is the way you can. Neither do I. Quality. No. You not not any industry. I feel right. you can't keep chasing the yeah, highs. Yeah. Because then you always think that my work's not good enough when right. it doesn't hit. And like, what can I do tomorrow better? Like, show you five more posts per hour <laughs> or something. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's like, now, now you can do yoga and touch your yeah, hip right. like, yeah. It is what it is. And like, I feel like... Can just, you do this though? I, I think I cannot. I sprint my... I, I <laughs> See, my yeah, maybe I can post better than you, her. Maybe you can book <laughs> her for LA Italy cover next law. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so then after we reach the high, like, let's talk about some of the lows. Because I feel like the modeling industry, right? Because from the outside, it looks so pretty. Everyone's yeah. wearing nice clothes. You're tall, you're skinny and all this stuff, right? My nice makeup and hair and all that. But I'm sure people don't know the struggles. Yeah. Right? Actually, the same highs come with the same lows. Mm. So, like, people will always think that, like, oh, fashion week is so glamorous. Like, you get to, like, do all these crazy shows. But then what they don't see is, like, you average 20,000 steps a day. Yeah. You're going to, like, 16 to 20 castings a day. Yeah. And then you can queue for hours. And then you find it's your turn. You're like, oh my god, it's my chance to shine, right? Then you're walking and then they're not even looking at you. Oh, because they probably, in they their mind, know. have someone that exactly. you already wanted. Exactly. So oh it's gosh. Like, so that is for Such me an... one of the lows where it's like you, you put so much importance to something just to see someone else like totally disregard you yeah. as a person. Yeah. So that is probably one of the lows. And then I also feel like sometimes when there is no camaraderie between models and friends, like that is... And you're staying months at a time in different places. Yeah. Like, when you have no friends, it feels like a very lonely and arduous task. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that's probably the lows. And the lows, for me, were much lower when I just started. It was a lot of, like, self-doubt. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. Like, I wish I could be this. I wish I could be that. Oh, yeah. Envy, doubt. Yeah. A lot of envy. And I realise now, when I look back at my first few, like, fashion weeks, I'm like, oh, such a bitch, eh? Yeah. Like, somebody is doing well and I'm like, cannot be happy for you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I think that, okay, not everyone. Well, I was there too once. I feel like when you're a younger person, some people grow up and some people don't. I also not look back on my past and sometimes I, I notice like, hey, actually during this period, I was quite envious of X person or Y person yeah. and that person yeah. of like, why are they doing better than me and stuff? And yeah. you're right. You should be able to be like, you know what? Like, the pie is actually big enough. Yeah you know, and it is their time to shine. Good for them. Yeah. And also then, like, that's the point where it's like, you might just not be the right, this is just not the right job for you. Correct. Exactly. So it's like, why force, like, a shark into a cup? Oh, my hair didn't blow. I thought, she, you, you know, like, models are used to, like, the hair. <laughs> my hair very like, is <laughs> It's not it's flying not at all. <laughs> we try, try, try. It's not it's literally... I wanted to help you do, like, some, like, a model moment. Sorry, fail. <laughs> Oh gosh, Steph. Okay, sorry. Continue. Yes. I think you need a, like a big fan, like a wind. Blow I know, like a like whirlwind. Like, like people doing like what's that called? I fly. You know, wow. tandem like so that. Kind. <laughs> the only thing, no, just my hair will fly. <laughs> okay, so now that we've hit your highs and lows, how do you think after thirteen years? What is your genuine feeling of this industry? Are you are you still? Happy that you went down this path? Would would there be anything you would change? I'm very I'm still very happy that I'm doing this. And also like when you were saying if people question your career, that now is the time where people are questioning my career, like like Vivian, model very long already, like how long more you wanna do this for? Yeah. And in my mind, honestly, I feel like I've always been somebody that has just taken opportunities as they come. Mm. So if the opportunities continue to come for work, like I Why would you not take Yeah, them? right. And I don't wanna limit myself as well too like if I were 20 and I was like I met a model who's like 30 I'd be like oh yeah but now that I'm at this age I feel like I feel okay yeah I'm genuinely happy and then if there are more opportunities that come I'll take it and if there's not then change the plan but it's not there yet so for me it doesn't 
I'm a very like just go with the flow kind of person. Yeah. So if it's not there, then don't you think so much? Uh? Why yeah. stress? You cannot. You can never know what's gonna happen. What if today I'm like I'm gonna quit modeling and then tomorrow my agency's like, oh, there's a huge campaign. Like it's gonna pay like six. Cover up L L E again. Like because I'm gonna do it right. <laughs> and yes, so never say no for me. Okay, so what advice you have on pursuing what you want to do in life? Because I feel like a lot of people are held back by a lot of restrictions. Like, should I do it? Like, it's the road less traveled. I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, so my life motto is try only. What do you mean? Just, Just try. try. Yeah. I mean, especially if, for example, it's a bit different when you're older and have up. other responsibilities. Sorry, I need to say that. Like other responsibilities, like if you have kids, if you have a family to support, yeah, like yeah. all that stuff, it's very, it's much harder to just try only, you know, to be. But when you're younger, this is my advice to people who are younger and maybe not that much responsibilities yet. If you have an opportunity and you want to try, just just go for it because you never know what's gonna come out of it. And if you don't try, you never know. Maybe you won't even like it. Yeah, maybe if something in your head that you're like, oh my god, I always wanted to do this, but I never did it. But then you're romanticizing what it actually is but yeah, if you right. actually do it then you will know okay this is something that is viable for me for the long term or not yeah. Like yeah. yeah but if right. you don't try you will never know yeah 100% I'm on I'm with you on that also because I think I've tried a lot of different things in my life and I think okay so I think we put a lot of pressure on younger people um, like when they are in university, like, hey, what do you want to do? Like w when you graduate, what's your career path? I mean, you're majoring in marketing, but would, you know, marketing is so broad. Where do you want to go? And I don't feel like that's fair. Like you ask yeah. a 21 year old yeah. like, or 23 or what you want to do with your life. I think I didn't really figure out what I really want to do with my life until I was 31 maybe. And I think that's exactly it, right? Meander as you go along because I don't think there's a fixed path unless you were young and you always want to be a doctor or lawyer or yeah. whatever it is that your dream was. But otherwise, like, I, would, I started out with working in my dad's company as a clerk and then admin and then moving away and coming back. Like, I, I did so many different yeah. jobs to this day when I found, like, you know what, actually I really enjoy doing creative work, be it, like, behind the scenes, in front of the camera, coming up with ideas, like, it's just what I love doing. And... No industry is easy, I would say. Every industry will come with its highs and lows. Um, and if it was that easy, would you even want to do it anyway? Yeah. Right? So yeah. I feel like, like, like what she said, like thinking about the issue or whether or not it would work would always be the biggest issue. Yeah. Because when you're actually doing it and problems arise, that's part and parcel of life or job or whatever yeah. it is that you have to face. And then you can decide then if these are problems that you feel like that's what I want in my life, I can tackle this. Yep. Or if those are the problems that you're like, oh, bye. Yeah, yeah. They're not doing me any good mentally and physically I can't I'm not just not apt to do this. And then you can let go. Yeah. And then do something else. But if you have a physique like hers, just go and model lah. So it's the moral of the story is try only <laughs> or in real English, just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a translation? Because we will need to hire like you have assigning like ladies so that everyone can understand what we're saying. Non English speaking audience, more just in case. I'm sure there are, but very few. Yeah, still not all I am. It's like, still not thank working. you so much. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank Vivian. You. Thanks for doing this today. Um, we wish you a better journey ahead. Maybe we can add more writing into your resume. I don't mind. Can write on. Can write on Godwright broadcast, and I have also written for print before. Although she speaks English, it's fine. But I can also code switch, so if you want to post, <laughs> I can also like get my American accent back. I was there for almost seven years. Oh, uh, code switch. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.